Does it feel like the food system is having a few issues lately? Our food system is under increasing pressure to feed more people around the world, but it is constrained by natural resources, economics, and the expectations of our changing society. Adding to these constraints is a need to decrease the carbon footprint of our food system, which is currently estimated to be 35% of global emissions. And if we look forward to 2050, we'll need to increase food production by 56% in order to feed an estimated 10 billion people. So at this point, you might be thinking, we're either going to destroy the planet or we're going to starve. Or can we redesign the food system? Our food system is a global interconnected network of farmers, food manufacturers, log logistics systems, and retailers. The scale of this food system is a testament to human innovation to secure one of our hu most basic human needs. And over the past 100 years, we have scaled and optimized this network for speed and efficiency. But this focus has led to a resource intensive system, which is also incredibly fragile. The COVID pandemic and now the war in Ukraine have shown us just how fragile this ecosystem can be to external disruptions. To continue to feed humanity without destroying the planet, we need to redesign this network, our food system, for sustainability and resilience. So to redesign any system, we first need to understand the challenges in its current design. Our food system is a result of decades of evolution in the way that we grow, manufacture, and transport our food. And most of us are aware of these challenges. We see them on the news and we're faced with them when we visit the grocery store. But to redesign a system, we need to think deeper about the root cause of these challenges. Fossil fuels are incorporated into the majority of the inputs that are used to grow our food. Agriculture removes more natural resources than it replenishes. Our food travels around the world on trucks and ships before we consume it. And the economics of agriculture are warped by politics and corporate policy. If we start by addressing these fundamental challenges, the impact on our food system can be positive and profound. And I believe the technology and innovation ecosystems can provide us with the tools that we need to start this process to redesign our food system. So I didn't grow up on a farm, as you can probably tell, but throughout my career as an entrepreneur and technology strategist, I've worked with technology across many businesses, across many industries. A few years ago, some farmers approached me to leverage this thing called the cloud to help them in the way that they operated. Now, it may have been a bit of fresh air or some amazing Australian wine, but this time on the farm sent me down a bit of a rabbit hole to understand the impact that technology could have on agriculture and our broader food system. I took every opportunity that I could to get on a farm, speak with some farmers, and understand the business of food and agriculture. What I found was an ecosystem of farmers, researchers, equipment providers, agronomists, working together, sharing best practice, all in, the const all in the pursuit of constant improvement. Like many people, I had become disconnected from our food system. I hadn't seen innovation in agriculture. The more farmers that I spoke to, the more that I realized that innovation was a very big part of our agriculture. As I started to understand farming, and farming systems, what I realized was that farmers were innovators, but they just needed a better set of tools. Agriculture is the least digitized industry in the world, but technology 
is woven into every aspect of it. And technology has been a big part of agriculture for hundreds of years. Over the past 150 years, what we've seen is three distinct agricultural revolutions. In the early 1900s, the Harbour Bosch process enabled us to produce synthetic nitrogen fertiliser. With this, we can now grow crops at an industrial scale. Without this innovation, we would not have been able to support the population boom of the 20th century. Then, in the 1920s, we traded horses for horsepower, attaching internal combustion engines to tractors to track bigger implements, harvest more land in less time. Then in the 1960s, we had a third agricultural revolution with chemical inputs developed to improve our yields and provide protection from pest and disease. But these tools are now becoming blunt and ineffective. Chemicals are under increasing regulation, crop genetics are facing diminishing returns, and our farming systems are facing these environmental conditions that they were never in designed to encounter. Fortunately, over the past decade, we've seen the emergence and then the convergence of new core technologies. These technologies, such as cloud, artificial intelligence, robotics, blockchain, and synthetic biology, they provide us with the tools to redesign our food system. These technologies will fundamentally transform existing agricultural production systems, but also provide us with new forms of food production. This revolution is already underway. We're equipping our fields with sensors and artificial intelligence. Robots are in the field, automating the way that we apply inputs to our crops. And our food with blockchain is going throughout our supply chain to provide trust and transparency to consumers. But this is only part of the redesign. As existing agricultural production systems are still constrained by arable land, water, and environmental volatility. Designing a food system that is gonna be capable of feeding us in 2050 will require new forms of food production. These new food production systems are being built from the ground up using technologies from our new toolkit and combining them to form new forms of food production. We will leverage synthetic biology and precision fermentation to create protein without animals. In our cities, we will leverage vertical farms to grow fruits and vegetables at scale. Now, some people think that these new forms of food production lead us down this path to a dystopian world where all that we eat is fake meat and kale. But I believe that these technologies provide us with a mechanism to bring balance to this redesigned food system. What they do is allow us to take our existing agricultural production systems and retrofit them to operate sustainably within their constraints while these new forms of food production are scaled and optimized for sustainability and resilience. So we have the tools and the technologies to redesign our food system. But building it will require an ecosystem of builders, organizations coming together, collaborating, developing and integrating these new technologies. The agri-food tech ecosystem is already underway and being developed around the world. Entrepreneurs are taking research and early stage technologies and turning them into commercial ventures. This provides opportunity for investors, governments, agribusinesses, and you to get behind these innovators, help them to create the innovations for our next generation food system. And farmers are a huge part of this ecosystem now and into the future. But the number of people in agriculture has been in steady decline for decades. If we're going to build the next generation of farms, we need to engage the next generation of farmers. 
to take these tools, to implement them, to integrate them into their farming systems with the skills and understanding that they need to operate increasingly complex farming systems. These farmers will be supported in the field by software developers, mechatronics engineers, who work alongside their agronomist, taking data and putting it into autonomous robots that can automate the way they run their farming operation. And in our cities, we will need urban farmers growing crops in vertical farms and protein with precision fermentation. We have the tools to redesign our food system. We have an ecosystem of builders who are developing. Feeding our society does not need to be at the detriment of our planet. Our food system can be redesigned to be sustainable and capable of feeding society into the future. So I would like to end on a question. Can you redesign the food system? Thank you.